Hey guys, Superhorror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at Little Nightmares 2, or more specifically, everything we currently know about this upcoming sequel to Tarsia Studios' creepy horror adventure game. This video will serve as both a recap on news released for Little Nightmares 2 up until this point in time, and also as a speculation piece, as we analyse and theorise based on the information at our disposal. So sit back, relax, and let's get started with an in-depth look at Six's latest adventure into madness. First, let's establish what Little Nightmares 2 is all about, with an overview of both the story and gameplay systems, as it seems to differ from the original in several key areas. If we visit the official website for the game, the developer describes Little Nightmares 2 as the following. Little Nightmares 2 is a suspense adventure game in which you play as Mono, a young boy trapped in a world that has been distorted by the humming transmissions of a distant tower. With Six, the girl in a yellow raincoat as his guide, Mono sets out to discover the dark secrets of the Signal Tower and save Six from her terrible fate. But the journey will not be straightforward, as Mono and Six will face a gallery of new threats from the terrible residents of this world. Will you dare to face this collection of new little nightmares? From this description we know we do not play as Six, the girl in the yellow raincoat, but rather a new male character wearing a paper bag over his head known as Mono, a boy who must save Six from an unknown fate. At the end of Little Nightmares, Six escaped for more and inherited a new superpower after draining the life from the lady. This power seemed to enable her to suck the life force out of anyone wishing to do her harm, but it seems this new power may be too much for her body to sustain. From the snippet seen thus far, it doesn't look like Six retains this power coming into the sequel, meaning she must have lost it somewhere along the line, or perhaps her body just got weaker. The website for Little Nightmares 2 also states that Six is fading from this world, her only hope to get to the signal tower with Mono. This tower seems to brainwash the residents of this city, as seen in the trailer. They stare blankly into the static of a television screen. From this static, the signal man shows up briefly, as if speaking to those he has enslaved directly via this medium. Mono, however, seems to have a power of his own, seemingly able to interact in supernatural ways with these televisions himself. Throughout the game's trailer, we see television sets dotted about in the strangest of places. On a beach, in the middle of a woods, and down a darkened alleyway. And at the very end of the trailer, Mono seems to push through one of these television sets which suggests these TVs will be used as teleportation devices, allowing Mono and his new companion Six to quickly cover ground. This also explains the diverse locations found in Little Nightmares 2. So Mono, unlike Six, actually has control over his superpower despite the existence of the Signal Tower, meaning he may in fact have originated from the tower itself and be in part related to the ominous Signal Man. For answers to these more advanced story questions, we will of course have to wait until the game's release. Now while on the subject of gameplay, alongside fast travel and a new character to control, it also appears as though Six will join us for part of the game. While it is unclear how much of this adventure Mono will spend alone, we can see from the trailer he meets up with Six in what appears to be her hideaway after waking up on a beach outside of the city perimeter. We can see Six and Mono will work together at certain points, and this suggests another new addition for Little Nightmares 2, cooperative play. Although it seems it will remain a single player affair, there will be times when Six and Mono must work together to overcome obstacles. Whether that be holding down a reanimated hand while the other attacks it with a hammer, or helping catch one another after a leap of faith, Little Nightmares 2 ensures that two heads are always better than one. It may also mean that boss battles incorporate this co-op mechanic, perhaps with one character distracting an enemy while the other prepares a trap. With that said, let's now move on from gameplay and over to a look at the new environments and characters present within the creepy world of Little Nightmares 2. We've already touched on Mono, so this roundup will be brief. However, new information on this pint-sized protagonist recently came to light via the Little Nightmares Twitter account. It's stated, 
An uncommonly single-minded child, once he sets himself to a task, he rarely gives up before it's completed. While this doesn't shed too much light on Mono's character, it does inform us that he is strong-willed and willing to see something through to the end no matter the cost. This strong will must come from somewhere, most likely a desire to free the minds of the people living within this city from the control of the Signal Tower. As mentioned earlier, Mono appears to have a supernatural ability. He can interact with the television screens to an unknown result, most likely to travel from place to place. I personally feel his abilities will develop as we get closer to the tower, and Mono may end up as an incredibly powerful entity. Again, we already know quite a lot about Six, but this trailer does include a few interesting points relating to her character and backstory. Recently on the channel, I covered a video delving into the game's mobile prequel, Very Little Nightmares, and its mysterious story. This told the tale of a girl in a yellow raincoat who became stranded inside a terrifying mansion known as The Nest after her air balloon crashed into its roof. This girl appeared to be Six, but by the story's end we discover Six was in fact another child trapped within the nest, who inherits the yellow raincoat from the player's character after she falls to her death at the end of the game. Six then takes a raft off the island, where she later becomes stranded on an aquatic prison known as the Moor. So why is this important? Well, as we explained in that video, Very Little Nightmares seems to tie into Little Nightmares 2 in several ways. One of these can be seen here in this drawing on the wall of Six's room. It shows the remains of a person's clothes laid out on the floor. During the final moments of Very Little Nightmares, Six and the girl in the yellow raincoat must escape from another child with superhuman abilities known as the Pretender. What's interesting about this girl is that her particular ability is disintegration. If she catches us, she evaporates the player into thin air, their clothes falling to the ground exactly as displayed here in Six's drawing. And in this picture we can see what appears to be Six's arms reaching out to try and grab the girl in the yellow raincoat as she fell from the cliff top. And finally, it seems like Six has been staying in this city for a while before Mono happens upon her, as she has documented both the Signal Tower and evidence of the creepy figure living within its walls, the Signal Man. Another way in which Very Little Nightmares ties into Little Nightmares 2 can be found with the new enemy character, the Teacher, who appears to be one of the two parents of the Pretender. We can tell this by matching the dress and shoes of the teacher in this concept art to those found in the family portraits within the nest. This would mean that the teacher normally resides within the nest, travelling from her isle to the mainland to work at the school within this city. We can also tie her late husband to the hanging man found within the moor. And finally, her portrait can also be spotted within the residence DLC here. This means the Moor is indeed connected to both the story of the nest in Very Little Nightmares and the one being told here in this mysterious city within Little Nightmares 2. All three locations operating as one evil hive mind, with their goal seemingly revolving around enslaving children and exploiting the greed of others. The teacher inhabits a schoolhouse environment and has the following developer description. An educator with an unusual ability to detect troublemakers. Her class is full of well-behaved children. This unusual ability can be seen both in the game's key art and also this concept art here. The teacher can elongate her neck in a serpent-like fashion, which we must conclude is to be used as a way to seek out Mono and Six, even in those hard-to-reach places. It seems the teacher will stretch out her neck and be able to find us no matter where we hide. It also seems her ruler may be used as a melee attack, and her mouth is pretty large, so perhaps she will be able to gobble us up whole. She can also send out waves of her well-behaved students to seek us out too. These children appear to be made from porcelain, smashing upon the impact of Mono's attack. 
This is another interesting throwback to the nest found in Very Little Nightmares, where a large portion of the house was used as a factory for crafting dolls. It's a mighty fine coincidence that the teacher originated from the nest, a place built around designing dolls, and then shows up in this game with a classroom full of them. Now alive perhaps as a result of reanimation via the use of souls drained from the captive children. In fact, we see various forms of reanimation throughout the Little Nightmares 2 trailer, even it would seem the reanimation of headless bodies and limbs. Creepy stuff for sure. Next up is the hunter, who appears to inhabit this rundown shack deep within the forest outside the city walls. This forest seems to hold many dangers of its own, and may even contain living trees that can themselves animate and tangle up our intrepid explorers. A message on the Little Nightmares Twitter states, The forest will reclaim what does not defend itself. See that you don't stand too still for too long, children. So constant movement is a must in this forest, but what about the hunter himself? Well, while slow moving, this new enemy carries a shotgun, which means if he spots us with his flashlight, it's almost certainly an instant game over. He wears a filthy old bag over his face, and the single hole cutout suggests he may only have one working eye. The hunter tears up and hangs the mangled bodies of his prey on hooks around his creepy cabin in the woods. It is vital Six and Mono find dark nooks and crannies to hide away from this formidable new opponent as he hunts us through the misty woodland. His developer description is as follows. The hunter seems to work alone, stalking the wilderness with a rusty shotgun and a lantern-style flashlight. His motives are unknown, but he does appear to have an interest in taxidermy. Finally, we have the Signal Man. So little is known about this character and his motives, that I've even had to invent his name for this video. But it seems fitting. From the brief glimpse of this man found within the trailer and his visualisation within the key art, we can see he is tall and lanky, with a bald head, dressed in a top hat and a trench coat. It is almost certain that Signal Man resides within the tower Mono and Six are journeying toward. It is also likely he has great telekinetic and psychological abilities, a trait we previously saw in the butler from Very Little Nightmares. The butler had the ability to levitate objects with his mind, however his full power could not be unleashed as his hands were bound behind his back under lock and key. So this butler may very well be a relation to Signal Man and another way in which these two games interlink. As Mono can also use the television sets to manipulate the world around him, we can speculate he may be tied to the Signal Tower himself and even a relation of Signal Man too. I may be reading too much into things here, but the way this creepy villain is framed in the key art, it almost seems as if the tower fits around his head just like Mono's bag. So maybe we will discover a dark secret about his origin. The Signal Man and his tower hold control over the city and seem to be key to reanimating bodies and bringing inanimate objects such as these dolls to life, so defeating him may finally restore this twisted nightmare to a more dreamlike reality. With that final thought we come to the end of today's video. I hope you did enjoy it and remember to check out some of my other Little Nightmares videos if you enjoyed this one as well as staying tuned for a full playthrough and theory videos for Little Nightmares 2 upon release. Remember to like this video if you did enjoy it as well as leave a comment down below about what you think is going on with this new game and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.